Hello Leo, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. It's all wild and unknown this week, Leo. Wild and unknown. We're going to use the Wild and Unknown Oracle and Tarot and Pocket Size Edition of the Tarot to pull out some messages just all about you, my friend. So we're going to, the first card that's going to come out with the Wild Unknown Oracle is going to be the card that symbolizes your kind of conscious ego at this time. So I want to say like sort of the, the part of you that you're functioning in um, most actively, other people are seeing it uh, most readily. Yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> we're going to go into the tarot aspect of this um, namesake, and we're going to find out what you're being asked to release. What are you being asked to embrace? A hidden factor that you are unaware of, and the energy that is approaching you. All right, pussy cats. I'm fighting a bit of a cold. Feel a little bit better after having some soup. <laughs> I had a habit on soup that I don't have to add water to. So I had over salted myself. <laughs> Anyways, you had to be here for the Aries reading. All right, Eo, Eo, Leo, you are the oyster. You are cracking open. There is some light coming out of you here. Um, it's almost like there's something inside you that's been, you've been working on for a while. You're putting on, a, you're starting to glow. <laughs> I'm steering these things. Like, you're starting to glow. There's a part of you, like, so, I don't know. Okay, I want to say because, you know, with the oyster, you always associate the, the pearl. And the pearl is created by the grit inside. And it's the oyster's response to the grit, to the difficulty, the thing that feels uncomfortable. And, um... <coughs> The cure that the oyster has for this ends up being this beautiful, like, it's not a gem. What do you even call it? Like, it's a stone. Like, I don't know. It's a, it's like a, a wart. I don't know. It's an oyster's version of a wart, but it's beautiful. So, it, you know, there's some sort of grit, some sort of healing that's been going on. Like, you've been healing something here. And I'm going to say, uh, whatever you've been healing, I feel like, because it's a pearl, like it's always going to be a part of you somehow. Like it's always going to be a part of you, but it becomes, it trans, you transform it into something beautiful, something that um, actually ends up having quite a bit of value. And then it glows. Like it's like the glowing orb of this inside of you is starting to, but the shell is still closed. So you're not exposing it yet. So, you know, roughly like, how would I attribute this to more typical explanation? I want to say that if you've been going through a bit of a rough time, um, if you've been doing some healing, people are noticing you have a bit of a glow. You have a bit of a little um, jump in your step. <laughs> oh, hyena. What are you, what are you doing? tricking? What are you doing? You're tricking. Kind of tricky energy here. What is with the hyena? Dark and light. Dark and light. I have to see where that goes. It's the only card in the underline. I get a bit of a scorpionic feeling from this card. Which is funny. Like it's not it's not water, but it is. It's kind of like there's two there's two sides to you. See that with the oyster i just i feel like there's just kind of like obvious things for coming out i'm like well all right mm. i've got to fill my water <clears throat> all right i'm gonna pull a tarot card to go with your oyster and then we're going to see what cards come out for what you're being asked to release what you're being asked to embrace what's a hidden factor that you're unaware of and what is the energy approaching you wow 
the Father of Wands. It's very powerful. So, um, very independent here. Very independent. And I gotta say, it's nothing like I thought would go with the oyster. It's a little bit, your whole reading is throwing me off. Oh, now that makes sense with the hyena. Like, there's two really different sides to you here. <laughs> Who are you, Leo? There's this really deep, interesting, watery side to you. Okay, I'm going to say there's a part of you here, like an emotional aspect of you here, that's starting to shine through that hasn't really in a while, or maybe it never has. And like, you know, the obvious part of you is this, the king of wands, like being really self-empowered, um, being very confident. At least that's what people perceive. And you know, you may think, I don't feel very confident. But there's probably just something about the way the universe has made you, and maybe it's even just your body and your mannerisms and your um, your body language too, that comes off as confident, you know. But the hyena, see, that makes sense. The oyster and the father of wands. These two very different energies. What are you being asked to release? The six of pentacles. What are you being asked to embrace? The nine of pentacles hidden factor that you aren't aware of, the Son of Pentacles, the energy that is approaching you, the Son of Cups. The Six of Cups, the Mother of Swords, and the Six of Swords at the bottom. I kind of feel like you've cut out some people. You know, I feel like I say these things over and over again. Guess we do. And then we come in and out and we do again. Um, but yeah, there's almost like someone from, from a, someone, this Six of Cups is coming in as something fairly significant. Like either someone that you've known for a long time or someone from way back in your past, which is, and I don't know if they were reintroduced into your life, the one from way back in your past. But you've made some kind of like final decisions here and you're going in a completely different direction with the Six of Swords. And I'm going to say, because you're showing up as like two really different elements here and you got the hyena, like you're, you're anyone's guess, my friend. I kind of feel like the people from your past or the person from your past here that you've cut out is uh, sees you in a certain way and it's one of these i don't know i don't know which one and then i feel like wherever you're heading to like wherever you're going they're going to see you more like okay i'm saying this yeah that's what happened so the people in the past see you as like perhaps holding back your emotions holding back emotionally having a lot built up emotionally I'm not really shining yourself strongly but then in the future you're shining very strongly you're not kind of drowning in your emotions either and that's a bit what this feels like with like a leo reading too what are you being asked to release the six of pentacles um it could be some like equal distribution of something here for you to do some sort of equal distribution it could be like Sometimes the Six of Pentacles can also be associated with like charity work, giving of yourself here. Okay, one of the, okay, the other thing that's coming in is sort of like measuring yourself against different things and people and elements and not doing that anymore because what you're being asked to embrace is really like this is really too it's your independence here it's this is a very independent energy so don't don't even you are like it's almost like i want to say temperance would be like sitting between here like you're alchemizing so it's kind of like a persona of yourself from the past and you're kind of hatching out right like the oyster is opening up this other really dynamic and strong-willed um and determined personality facet of yourself and then getting that too like right this nine of pentacles it's like it's sovereign it's um it might even be some sort of wealth that's coming your way also because the, 
also this card with the six of pentacles to release it it kind of feels like you know because often they're measuring in the six of pentacles is there enough here we give it a little bit there we give it a, this is just like enjoying prosperity the physical benefits of prosperity that could be around you right now now the hidden factor that you're unaware of something to do with a long-term plan Maybe you're very close to a long-term plan that you've been working through, or maybe you're about to start, um, you know, a plan that you're thinking, I need to do something. I need to have some kind of, I need to sit down and look at things. And then I need to kind of like take a, um, create a theoretical approach that I can adapt into real life here, right? You can have a theory about where you want to go, but what, what steps are you going to take to do it? And maybe you're about to start that, or there could be someone coming towards you with a plan. Energy that, although the energy that is approaching you is the Son of Cups, is the Knight of Cups here. If this is an energy that you're going to embody, this is really creative. This is really creative. This is really flowing with your emotions quite nicely. This image is very different from what I've pulled out for you in a while. Let's see where it takes us. I'm going to look at both the oyster and the father of wands separately because they're so different. Okay. The oyster, your conscious ego. Now that's landing on the nine of pentacles. The seven of pentacles and the son of swords. Okay. Embrace. Okay. Okay. If you embrace the Nine of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles is associated with, it's kind of like the building block that you needed for some sort of plan here. Well, that's interesting. A hidden factor that you're unaware of is like a long-term plan. Um, and the Son of Swords is like not hesitating. It's because it's almost like now you have what it is that you need to do something independently, um, to be independent of something. Now's the time to really strike. The other thing that I'm getting to, it's like, it's actually all right. You're not the oyster. Mm -hmm. There's something inside the oyster. Because I'm seeing this now is like, uh, what is it called? It's a shucking, a shucking tool to open up an oyster. That's exactly what this is. And it's like the plan how to do it. How do you open it up? How do you get into the oyster without damaging anything in the oyster? Right? It's almost like, well, how do you get in there? There's a prize here. And the king of wands, this is how I see you kind of showing up. I'm confident. I can do it. Right? <laughs> the king of wands is going to come in and say... I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I'm going to show the world how I shuck this oyster. Okay, you're the king of wands. And I want to say in the oysters, is always like the pearl. It's what I described. It's like a really amazing prize to discover. The father of wands. The th oh, the three of swords and the father of cups. You're shucking open your own heart here. And I mean like your own emotions. You're like exposing them. This is who you are. Ah. <laughs> now we get it. This is like, no, it's this. It's, this. it's like watching a, a whodunit and you're like, oh, I think it was them. Oh, no, I think it was them. Oh, I think it was them. <laughs> Did that in all the movies. It's like by the time I'm like, Three quarters of the way through a Who Done It movie, I think they've all done it. <laughs> they've all done it. It's like one bad person has it. I know for sure they have it. And then that's the one I was I'm like, oh Jesus. Yeah, no, this okay, the oyster is an issue. But I think there is a prize inside, like emotionally here to open up. Showing the world that you've healed something too. Having the confidence to open it up and show the world that you've healed it. 
going from the Three of Swords to the Father of Cups. You might have some battle scars along the way, but yo, it's healed, shucking it open. What are you being asked to release? The Six of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles. Ten of Swords. Oh, the Two of Cups and the Star. It's almost like it's the end of weighing things out. And then release. I want to say release what your dreams and your wishes are. And maybe you're supposed to like communicate that to somebody special in your life. If there was somebody special in your life, because you have the three of swords and this ten of swords is here. Um, I feel like, like it is to move beyond that. It's to move beyond that in this healing energy. It could also have something to do with the concept of relationships, like equal give and take here on a monetary level. But Ten of Swords is like bringing an end to something. And if that's how like relationships have been um, like for you generally for the most part, it's time to have like a very different approach. Now, that could be like, what's interesting right because there's like a type of sharing in that and then this is not this is the nine of pentacles this is yours and yours alone and you're doing this on your own embrace that the nine of pentacles the wheel of fortune and the father of wands so there you are a new cycle this is a new cycle about this is a new cycle about your independence um your drive it's cracking open emotions that have been kept uh, sort of hidden and in some sort of a healing process. I'm going to say now, the more we go on that pearl, that piece of grit, it's like the piece of grit is symbolizing the initial pain that you experience in some kind of heartbreak or loss. So I think of like all the people that I've like loved dearly who have passed on and the emotional trauma and pain you know when they're gone and it's not so much that you know i worry about them it's just that i wish i wish i could hold my grandfather's hands again or i wish i could smell my grandmother's baking again it's what you miss in that of them like they're still there in the ethereal but it's not it's not the same so but i always like to think like you have these scars on your heart so they heal right and you, you can kind of feel that and visualize it that these these pains these hurts they heal over time, but the scar is always there. And it's almost like a reminder of that, yeah, that person was in my life. I have that, I have those memories. And with the oyster, like the, the pearl forming around that grit, it's like there's something here, that something happened to you that's significant. Um, and maybe, maybe this is the third, a third one I'm hearing. Because of the three swords. And it's fine, like it's, you're gonna be okay. You can keep moving on because the pearl is around it. So now what I'm kind of getting with the oyster as I watch it as this reading evolves, because it really is, and I think it's kind of symbolic of you too, how the energy is and the story is. Is like the, the oyster must, I'm thinking it must be like clams. I'm more familiar with freshwater clams than I am with oysters and how they function. But a clam, like the muscle of it kind of comes out of the shell a bit and it digs into the dirt and it moves around, right? So it almost feels like this is cracking open for the muscly part to come out and move around. Travel, the son of the son of swords and the seven of pentacles. So it's like now the oyster can move because the grit has been covered in the pearly substance. It will always be there with you, but it won't hurt. It might every once in a while feel it a little bit, like oh, it's weird, it's soft and smooth, and huh. So it, I wanted to also just say 
this and whatever like the nine of pentacles could symbolize for you in its simplest terms it's some form of sovereignty um but i think it is in a way like sovereign from whatever the grit was if that all makes sense because now it is it's like freedom of movement the father wants going to go and do whatever he wants and I feel like that's what's coming up here because this oyster, it's the pearl. The pearl has been, it's perfect now. The pearl is fine. It's in there and the grit won't bother the oyster. Hidden factor that you're unaware of is the Son of Pentacles. So. Five of Pentacles, the Hermit. And the Ten of Pentacles. I feel like this is some kind of... Right, well, it's funny because this is Seven of Pentacles is like kind of planning. But it's looking for... It's looking for a new route forward because the route that you're taking isn't working. So... There's a route... <laughs> it's like there's a route or there's a solution to some sort of progress that you would like to make coming towards you but it's a very slow and methodical it's it i mean it could be a person with the hermit card as well it could be a place um of work it could be a home it could be a, and i want to say it might be a place you haven't seen in a while or a place you haven't been. I don't know if this is something, it's not really telling me much, right? Like it's just, what about that? This is a place where you would have felt lack or you would have felt sort of disassociated from it. But then on the other side, it's like, wow, this is abundant. This is huge. So it almost, I kind of want to say that while you were going through something some some environment some place has also been transforming and whether this is a place from your past and you know it as somewhere that feels draining it feels um very uncomfortable to stay in that energy or this is a place that has been that and you're going to discover it in its abundance. Either way, there's a transformation here. It kind of feels like it's a person because we have two cards, like we have um, a court card and then we have a major arcana that's like an individual, like a hermit. So while you've been transforming, there's been some energy outside of you that's also been transforming. There's something significant though, like this is the Sun of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles. So this has a lot to do with, I want to say like physical places and possibly money, but definitely about long-term plans here. Can you tell us anything else about The Son of Pentacles. And can you tell Leo anything? Eight of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. Oh! Oh, this is, okay. This is almost like an energy that stayed away from you or an energy that you couldn't go towards until, like, you embrace this Nine of Pentacles, which is like, A, it's, this is like your whole new self-confidence. Um, and it's associated with healing, grounded emotions, both your, your drive, your desire, your emotions, and your feelings are all kind of like really strong and healthy. And you're utilizing those. So there's an energy coming towards you now that something has changed. Well, if you really embrace it. It looks like it's a cycle change. Like you just have to feel this and go into it with the Wheel of Fortune. I, I want to say, I feel like you're about to embrace a really fortunate cycle. Because the Wheel of Fortune, too, can also be like, even just, it has the word fortune. 
So there could be some um, significant gains for you in terms of money. And then the Father of Wands, I mean, this is pretty confident and looking fine. Also going after what it is that you want. Like, don't, don't hesitate. The energy that is approaching you. Okay, the thing that you're unaware of is not necessarily what's approaching you. It's been transforming. Is it connected? Because these are two nights. So now you have this night. The Son of Pentacles. The Son of Cups. See, I said that. It's funny. Wow, the Seven of Cups into the Ten of Cups. This change is like... It removes fog. It removes emotional fogs are removed in this energy that's coming towards you. Things seem really clear and hopeful, abundant in terms of like just dreams and access to resources with the Nine of Pentacles as well. You guys are moving into a good cycle, but it's weird. Like you almost have to really dig it out. It is like pulling out. Like a pearl but you want to pull out the pearl the pearl is part of you now it stays with you yeah the hyena the hyena the seven of swords why wouldn't it be Oof. sneaky the seven of swords and the four of swords sneaky healing <laughs> a sneaky healing a sneaky rester a sneaky sleeper, a sleeper, like a sleeper energy. What does that mean? Doesn't that have something to do with spies, like a sleeper? Isn't that someone who's a spy that's like in a group of people and they're just acting like that group of people? You know, if it was a whole bunch of um, Indonesian uh, farmers in a field, and this person is like looking and acting and doing just like an Indonesian farmer. But they're not really doing anything that a spy, you know, they're not going after the bad guy. They're not in the um, the consulate looking for the microfilm. <laughs> like that, I feel like it's a sleeper. So it's almost like an energy that's around you or an energy that you have been. Well, you've been the sleeper too at the oyster energy that you've been the sleeper six of cups magician mother of swords the hierophant oh the empress the six of swords Seven of Wands and the Two of Swords. <laughs> Where you're going? <laughs> I picked this energy up a few times with you guys where it feels like there's some kind of abundance that you've left behind and you're moving towards... Um, it, it's weird, right? Because then the Six of Swords comes in which says that abundance wasn't like the best place to be because you're moving away from that difficult period and going into another period. You're traveling somewhere. You're, I want to say you're on your way here going somewhere, right? Like the oyster, the muscle has come out. You're traveling somewhere. and But you're still, you don't know where you're going. And you're not sure. I want to say there's apprehension with the seven of wands. There's apprehension with the seven of wands. Which is kind of interesting because there's something coming towards you. <laughs> so just get ready. Uh, yeah, it's just two pentacles at the bottom. Weighing out the pros and cons. You're supposed to release that shit. <laughs> release it. Don't weigh anything anymore. I'm going to go do the extended after I fill up my water. <laughs> the extended, we're going to look at what is the archetypal energy of your inner child, your deeper spirit right now? Um, what is your inner child asking of you at this time? How are you responding to that? And how would your inner child actually like you to respond? Thank you so much, Leo. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.